here. Let's go. Ah, oh, it's raining. Southern California. Los Angeles. I would think that I am in Seattle, Washington. Rain, rain every day. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah, been in California for a long time. We're a weird bunch out here. Let me just tell you. Pretty soon we're going to have too much water, so we're going to have to raise taxes to handle drainage. <laughs> we have a couple dry years here, and they add extra tiers onto the water rates, tax the shit out of us, because we use too damn much water uh, to do seven loads of laundry a week. They start having police run around looking to make sure you don't water extra your plants. We live in a desert. Uh, we've got the Pacific Ocean right there, but we shut down all our nuclear plants, which could have actually desalinated the water at a reasonable cost, mm -hmm. but that's another story. And then, um, you know, we, we're in uh, global warming, and so we're going to end up as a desert, and we're not going to get any rain, and that's why we had this so-called 20-year drought. Let me tell you a story. 25 years ago, we had monsoon like this. It's amazing. I, I worked out in the, as a young man, I worked out in the Mojave Desert, middle of nowhere. I actually worked in Death Valley. Very warm. But we had these monsoons that would come in. You could watch them come across the valley. Lots of rain. And when the rain hits the ground, it generates this circular wind sort of thing. As the raindrops are heavy and they fall, and you can see this wall of black that heads towards you. Lightning. You'd think that Thor is swinging his hammer double time. If you've never been in anything like that, it's a pretty amazing, it's amazing. I, I can remember these storms on the monsoons would come in, lightning would dance across the sky, <clears throat> and it would be maybe evening, and we're on a trouble call, and we have a broken cross arm, and, and the lines are energized, and we're up the pole, and everything is secure, and we can see two lines, single phase running down, span to span, and you, you'd see the flash of lightning, and you'd hear it right away, quack. And then the next, it, within a second or two, you can see the lines do this. They go, whoa. And I'm up there with the old guys, and man, I swear you could see this blue light around the wires when it would do this. Uh, and you, you could hear it. It would sound like a shh. And the lines would go like that. And I was talking to some of the older guys that had been around. Heck, some of them had been around since World War II. You're like, oh yeah, that's the uh, that's the induced current running down the line, and that's what's breaking our arms, aside from the wind and the rain, um, and causing these power outages. It's just, and then to sit there, we don't work in that condition anymore. If it's raining and lightning is up there like that, it's actually really dangerous, and we're supposed to ground and cab up because it that induced induction of electricity is severely dangerous, and I can't imagine. We just didn't know. We were up the poles and the towers and we could see what was going on around us. Didn't think that it was energizing everything, including our bodies. And if we got wet or the insulation wasn't good, it would have been bad news. So, you know, we've learned a lot since then. But back to my story. That was some 25, 30 years ago. How long have I been working? 38 years now? Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was that long. Maybe it was 35 years ago. It would rain like it's raining now, really, really hard. And we watched some of these dry lakes fill up to like five feet deep. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, these lakes hadn't seen water in years. And it was funny because we'd see them fill up, and then like four days later, you'd have a monsoon that goes by again. And we'd be by the same dry lake, and the lake would be shimmering like this. And yet there's no, you know, the storms had passed. The water was still, it wasn't raining or no wind, but the water was doing this. It was dancing like little white caps. It's like, what the hell's going on here? And so here we are in the middle of the desert, right outside of Death Valley, Mojave Desert. And four days ago, five days ago, this lake was empty. Now it's full, very, very full. And the top of the surface is doing this. And there's a lot of bugs around. It's like, oh, well, shit, those were bugs that just came. No, man, it was fish and shrimp. There were shrimps like that freaking big in four days. Uh, they look like sand fleas. And I guess there's this brine shrimp that live in the Mojave Desert I wasn't aware of. And there were so many of them, there wasn't even like an eighth of an inch between these dudes. And they're jumping trying to get, I guess, mosquitoes or whatever else was breeding uh, in the... Uh, 
lake and they're trying to eat as much as they could as fast as they could grow as, as big as they could as fast as they could before the lake would dry up so they could burrow back down into the mud and lay eggs so when the lake would dry up they'd lay dormant again i heard for up to 50 years or more fish and shrimp and then they would come out of their suspended animation and go through this cycle again and they might only be alive for a couple weeks it's like holy shit that's pretty damn amazing uh very very interesting very very interesting yeah i saw a lot of things out on the desert especially out there towards uh death valley tacopa you know furnace creek out there at baker yeah a lot of military bases out there strange things you can see uh got to see all the stealth equipment in the 80s flying overhead uh, we knew they were military but obviously you can see what they are but you don't know what they are officially amazing to have that kind of uh early career i can remember doing some electrical work near the mars antenna with this huge 200 meter i think it's 200 meter maybe it's 100 meter uh white antenna they used to track the apollo network huge and it's in the background you look like you're on another planet with this huge freaking i don't know shield generator or something uh so it, it's miles away and you can see this thing lots of fun things out on the desert but back then they were complaining a lot about this, you know, the earth is going to heat up, the earth is going to heat up, and we're all going to die because the earth was going to heat up, and that us, men, caused it. And I heard this for years, and I even heard it at even corporate levels. We're like, we, oh, we, we got to not do certain things because, you know, we're damaging the, the earth, you know, the climate, we're, we're, we're making it too hot. And so that went on for years, and, and uh, it never really felt like it got that hot. It just kind of got a drought, which is a normal part of the cycle uh, for us here in California. It's absolutely normal. We're going to go through a decade of drought, and then we're going to go through a decade of uh, normal rain. And then at the end of that or at the beginning of it, we're going to get a hell of a monsoon for a year or two. It's just what happens here. Huh. And it's... I, it, and in the last few years, it started getting colder and colder and colder. And then everybody starts saying, well, it's not global warming. It's actually climate change. Okay. Well, climate change is definitely a factor. I mean, shoot, we could have volcanoes or asteroids. Climate's always changing. That's legit. Oh, no, no. But us people, we cause climate change. We do? I mean, how do we cause climate change? Oh, it's because we drive cars. And we light fires. Well, I mean, I've seen local climate change, but global climate change? Hell, I don't know. But let's just look. I mean, this whole global warming thing seemed to be, you know, driven to increase taxes. I can remember when they came out with carbon credits here in uh, California, literally taxing the air that we breathe. And they do it through corporations. They started at a certain size so many employees and above and now they actually do it through i think just about every corporation that exists here essentially they tax them for carbon which causes global warming but we're actually globally cooling now so basically we're taxing the air that you breathe yeah pretty strange and it's even stranger when you start to think about it. Like, it's, it's snowing on me right now here in Southern California, and it is uh, March 30th. Wow. Pretty amazing. That, and I could see the snow coming. And it reminded me of when I was a kid, there was this giant fad that was out there in the public. And I actually read some novels, and it was about the coming ice age. I remember one novel that stated in 1999 there was a mile thick ice sheet and these people were living in these underground bases. Well, they weren't underground, they were under ice. They were built before the ice age had got a hold of these people. And, which is kind of ridiculous, ice moves that would have shattered these structures. But, you know, it was almost like being on a spaceship. They'd go up above the ice and they'd, they'd check things out. And it was kind of post-apocalyptic ice world, you know. And... I can remember reading in the, was it the epilogue or footnotes that it's based on science that was happening today with uh, mankind uh, accelerating an ice age by 10,000 years. 
what we were doing in the 60s and I guess the 70s had encouraged uh, all of the science at the time to agree we were going to end up in an ice age by the year 2000, a severe one. And they changed their mind in the 90s and said it was global warming. But it, the thing is, is they had consensus. And I'm making this fun little video because anytime there's a consensus from all sides, get ready to get bent over, people. Nothing will create a consensus on all sides. And my point is, when everybody agrees on something, there's a mass delusion going on. It's just what happens. Uh, and you can see it today. Uh, I'm shocked at the amount of mass delusion and the amount of agreement that goes on. Even though we have political sides that are at each other's throat and we're in this culture war, this fifth generation warfare that's, that, that has little hot spots breaking out, you run into all areas of the political spectrum hating on Russia. And nobody really knows the whole story, but everybody hates that. They claim they know the story, but is it empirically true? Don't really know because it's hidden from us. And this whole thing about climate change, everybody agrees on it. Well, and they agree that it's man-made. And they want to shut you down and say the science is settled. If you ever hear the science is settled, <laughs> it's the big yeah, but it's not settled. It's, it's forcing something. And science is never settled. It's always in flux as we learn new data. Can it be shifted? Sure. And it should be. But when everybody agrees on something and taxes are tied to it, you get ready. You're going to get it without lube. And that's how I see this climate thing as it's snowing on me here in Southern California and in basically L.A. <laughs> you hear things like that and get ready. It's coming. You know, when you hear there's a big bad guy and everybody agrees that it's a big bad guy, right out of George Orwell's 1984. They're telling you that everybody agrees and you should too. You should be very, very worried. Uh, it goes back to a video that I said earlier. Don't believe anything you read and only believe half of what you see. Find out for yourself. You'll be much happier because if you jump on the bandwagon and believe all this stuff, basically you're allowing other people to create beliefs for you and those beliefs become convictions. You're not even making your own beliefs up. And I talk about inner game and depth of character, building your depth of character. In order to do that, you have to be able to actually think for yourself in a rational and systematic fashion. And you need to do that and apply your emotions to it and be able to filter good from bad and create success in your life and be able to bend reality to your will. And if you could do that successfully, the level of fulfillment and enlightenment is huge. But if you allow others to do it for you, it's a false enlightenment. You're lazy. You're dog lazy. If you're going to let other people think for you, give you ideas which become beliefs based on none of your own research or observations, I, I'm not saying don't use them for information. I'm just saying if they do that and then you allow that to turn into a conviction, you're going to see some pretty horrible stuff show up in your life at some point. Anyways, look at this. The sun's coming out. I guess now that it's not stolen, we're going to have to worry about global warming again and not global cooling. I don't know. I guess we'll just stick with climate change because it can go up, it can go down. And if it stays the same, would that be considered climate neutrality? I don't know. As long as there's no taxes tied to it, I'm good with that. I am against pollution. I don't think you should shit in your own mess kit. I mean, clean up, I mean, you know... Certainly, industry produces toxins. Fix that shit. I mean, it's not hard to do, uh, and there's good reasons to do it. Look at China, man. What a nasty place with chemicals. Worst polluter ever. Countries that industrialize definitely go through that, uh, the pursuit of money, right? So I think there's good things to come out of cleaning up toxins and industry, but climate change, yeah, it's real. Is it man-made? Nah. Yeah. Climate changes all the time in the record, and even when man wasn't here, 
the climate change far worse for reasons we're not even sure we understand. So I guess it would be best for us to be prepared, you know, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. But taxing everybody because we, the science is settled and I am going to keep prosperity from a certain class of people because I think that people caused this is some of the most evil shit I've ever heard and it can lead to nowhere good. Anyway, that's RP4's rant. Skull. The sun's out now.